Hello and welcome back to another episode of my Ride 5 career mode and today as you can see we're here doing the 700cc Naked Bikes World Tour. So of course in the last episode we did win an Aprilia Tuono which I guess is the bike that we are going to use in this one and of course like I promised I am going to turn the AR difficulty up as well. Hopefully it works for us. I'm going to try the same strategy that I used in the last championship as well with the slick tyres because that seems to be a pretty overpowered strategy. I mean of course there will be circuits where we do get kind of harmed by having lower top end but most of the time the better tyres are the way to go. So we've actually got a few different events here that we've got Blue Wave Circuit which is a new circuit for the game. Obviously we played that in the tutorial. We've got VIR, Kyle Army and uh, Suzuka Shorts. So uh, quite a few different circuits there. Some that we haven't been, well we haven't really been to any of these before. Obviously we have done Blue Wave Circuit in the tutorial but we've not actually done a proper race here before. Well, it actually seems like we can't do that strategy. We can't actually put the uh, the slick tires on. It makes the bike too, too over the power because if we look at the number of performance points, we're allowed 489 and unfortunately we're at 447. And if you put on a set of slick tires, it puts us up to 492. And I think that's the same regardless of which brand we use. Of course, they can't be showing favoritism to particular brands. So unfortunately, we can't actually do that strategy. So that does worry me slightly. Uh, we are probably going to have to go to the old engine upgrade route which is is fine but it's gonna be a struggle in the corners that's for sure so i've upgraded the bike as much as i can now obviously everything is at the tires that's what we've got on it just unfortunately i think the bike is too good as a base for us to actually put the tires on which is a shame so it will be a bit of a different affair to the previous episode and then once we get into the track of course i will turn the ai up obviously i've just not been able to do it until we actually get to the circuit then you can change the race settings so we turn the ai up to 110 percent then as you can see there we will see how we get on in this race of course if we need to turn it up more we can if we need to turn it back down we absolutely can as well but because we dominated so much in the last episode i thought it is worth turning up but then getting ready to start here we go at the blue wave circuit completely new bike as well so we've got to get used to that and back on these stock tires so of course we've got to get used to that as well since we've just been running slicks in the previous championship. But we seem to have had a pretty good start off the line as we go down towards the first corner on the inside of a few AI. A bit of contact, just trying to make sure we don't make a big mistake. Well we have made a big mistake because so I the completely wrong gear. I didn't go down enough gears. I think I was too busy focused on being hit there by the AI. And we got hit up the back again by an AI coming through that turn. Oh, sweeping it across the front. But a pretty good start. Someone's going around the outside of us there. And we're trying to go back up the inside again now. A bit of contact. It's not, it's not with the cleanest. The hitboxes are really off on this game. That's what I've uh, noticed. I mean, it's always like with the milestone games. The hitbox is not really that close to where the bike is. Because I play so much GP bikes, I try to go for good close passes a lot of the time. Because I feel like there's enough room. But I think I do catch myself out a little bit. But either way, we're up to P3. So we're getting on okay here. We're not... Uh, Having another sort of repeat of the first championship we did on the uh, the 250 where we struggled quite a lot in the opening races. Although that was a pretty bad run out the last corner. And we are sort of getting swarmed a little bit as we go towards turn one. We might we might need to try and get in the slipstream. Although I have just thought that we didn't put any upgrades on, did we, in that first championship. So that's probably why we struggled so much. But down towards turn one then, trying to carry the corner speed through. They're sort of parking on the apex. We're trying to pick up the power. Bradley Hooper takes the lead from Yasmin. And we've got the inside of Yasmin Ventura... Canavallo, I don't know if that's how it's pronounced. And we got the inside of Bradley Hooper as well. So into the lead here at Blue Wave. So even though we've turned the AI difficulty up, we're still winning the race. And we've run a bit wide though through turn four onto the gravel, in fact. Come on, back onto the circuit. Fortunately, we've not lost too much for that. We lost a couple of places, although it's now completely different people than we were battling with before. We've actually ended up getting back up into second place. So to be fair, that was some good damage limitation because then I ran straight into the gravel which you don't want at all and we're looking for a pass into turn seven we're on the inside curb sorry to sort of barge my way through there and again unfortunately we can't have messed up that corner wrong gear it's difficult when you try to sort of learn a new bike to see what gear you need to be in especially when you're not used to the engine note of it as well and to be honest the engines are relatively quiet i might actually need to sum my volume up i think i have to make a lot of mistakes with the gearing but as we go down towards turn one can we try to sweep around the outside into the lead yes we can what a move so up into the lead of the race once again, this time in a bit more of a clean affair than we have perhaps with some of the other ones. I do apologise, it's quite a bit of contact, but there's so many AI and the AI just keep hitting me out the way. The hitboxes are a bit off. I'm still making mistakes on the brakes, although to be fair, we've now been re-overtaken, so maybe he's got a bit more power than us, so they're on the same bike. So I don't see how that would be possible because we've got the same upgrades on and the game stutters quite a bit there as it turns to night, which isn't ideal because that's maybe run wide. 
Like, I don't mind that it's night, but the fact that the game stuttered. And you can see the, the floodlights seem a bit broken. I think that might be a bit of a glitch that hopefully should be fixed on day one. But it, is, it seems to be a glitch with all the lights because it happens with the headlights of the bikes as well. And there's just so many screen freezes here. It's just completely ruined my race, really, this last lap with it being night time. And unfortunately, I've actually been dropped to fourth place just because of the, the floodlights coming on. That's a shame. I am quite disappointed by that because, yeah, that was basically the floodlights that cost us there because I was braking. The, the game starts to screen freeze. I can't really brake as hard anymore because I'm just risk losing the front. So I have to kind of just wait for the screen to come back to me. And unfortunately, we lost a couple of places in that process. But fourth place there, not too bad whatsoever. We can start off the championship like that. 28 points as well for the leaderboard. So not too bad, not too shabby. And we've actually just got a, an achievement for winning. It says win five races, but it was saying get five, beat this certain rider of five races. So fair play. I didn't even know that was a rival of ours, but uh, we ended up beating her anyway. So then we've got event number two next at Virginia International Raceway. Another circuit I don't know. I think maybe I would know the full VIR course. I think I may have done it before, but I definitely don't know this short layout. So another sort of new circuit to try and learn on the fly against some pretty difficult AI. It seems like the AI settings have changed again as well. You can see it says very hard 100% there, but we definitely set it to 110 because you saw that in the last clip. So not sure exactly what that is. I don't know whether we can edit it here or maybe if I can back out. Let me see if I can try and sort that one out because maybe that was why the pace seems similar because maybe it set it back to 100 after we'd set it to 110. Okay, that should be fixed now. You can see it is on 110. We've just gone and set it in the career mode settings. So we'll head into this race at VIR now and see how we get on. So here we are then on the grid of the Virginia International Raceway. Looks like we're probably in about eighth place here. So let's see what we could do at this circuit and if we could try and learn it quickly. The light side away, we've got a pretty good start. We're already up to seventh place. We're getting a pretty good run there. There's that rival, Luana Pinto. This said we managed to be in five races. But look at this straight line speed. We're just flying past all the AI on the run into turn one. We break for turn one. And what a start it's been. We've gone from P8 to P1 somehow, so I don't know how we've done that. I guess maybe we've got a straight line speed advantage over the AI again now. I mean, I suppose in the last championship, we're so used to not having it because we didn't upgrade the engine at all. We only upgraded the tires, but I guess on this occasion, we did everything except the tires. So we probably have a bit more top end again, a bit like when we were on the Honda. Although I actually felt on the Honda that we didn't really have the, the top end either. The Honda just didn't end up being that great. And we've gone straight on. Where are we supposed to be going? I think the track sort of bends around this way. Oh, uh, yeah, it goes, goes around that way. So we've completely gone the wrong way. We've, well, completely messed that up, basically. I've bottled this race. Uh, what place are we in now? 11th place. So we've got a lot of work to do. I'm going to try to go around the outside of Leah D, but it's not really worked. Here we go, the inside. Double overtake. Oh, just about. A bit of contact. Sort of part the bus in front of him. He's come back at us, to be fair. It's Ellis Mercer. He is an AI that I do remember the name of from one of the previous ones. Same with... Gail Dupont, and Dupont doesn't seem to have the straight on speed, he's held up. Maybe that's why the AI actually were going so slow, was I think maybe somebody at the front had a bad bike, and I just sort of went round them, because obviously a player can see that, whereas AI just follow each other. We're back up into P8, so even after our off-track excursion, we're not doing too bad. We've had a lot of off-track track excursions on this bike. I guess it is being back on the stock the tyres. The stock tyres are just unbelievably bad. We're back up into P6 then now. Can we get Luan to Luana Pinto? To be fair, we still actually have an outside shot of winning this if we can uh, try and make a couple of passes here. Up the inside of the Luana. Through the last turn on the power. Who we got in front of us? Yasmin. Again, another name that we recognise. I don't know how to pronounce her second name though. I must, I must say. Finley Cooper then just ahead of her. It looks like maybe the guy in second place hasn't quite got the power on the bike and he's holding the others up a little bit. And as we go down towards turn one, around the outside, back up into P2, but I got the grass on the entry. Come on, please stop. Yes, we just kept it on the circuit. So up into P2, around the outside. So now it's just ZI leading the race. We've got to try and overtake. I think, to be honest, I might put the AI difficulty up to 120 in the next episode. Or in the next race, sorry. We've forced our way through at the inside of ZI. A bit aggressive, but to be fair, there was Ruby. He could have picked the bike up. And again, the collisions being slightly off don't help at all. It's difficult to know where you can actually put your bike when your bike is bigger than your bike, if that makes any sense. Like the actual hitbox for the bike is much bigger than the model. Whereas usually at GP bikes, it's pretty much exactly the hitbox of the model so you can pull some very close passes on people without contact but it looks like on this occasion even with a bit of an off-track excursion where we bottled the race we're going to come out the last corner and win here on our Aprilio Tuono up towards the line we got our first win in America 
it seems like on the American circuits, they're just really bad because that's kind of the same thing that happened at Daytona. Because if you look at ZR, uh, ZR you see was on uh, slick tyres, which probably does help. But I think the uh, the power disadvantage is going to be quite big, even with uh, the, the bike must be quite bad. The MT-07, that's probably not too bad. So I don't know why our bike has such high performance points that we couldn't even put the slicks on. It made it illegal. But uh, you can see they've only got 443 with slicks on. So if I were them, I'd be putting loads of bike upgrades on as well, unless... They already have, and that may make sense. Maybe this bike is just miles better than the MT-07 in stock trim. But there we go. We picked up a win quite easily, actually. Even with a massive mistake, we we're still able to come out on top without too much opposition. So then, next up, we have got a time attack at Kyalami. So like we did... With the previous set that was four events, we had two races, a time trial and another race. We've now got another time trial. Hopefully, we could do a little bit better than we did at Monza because we really struggled with the one that we did there. So here we are then at Kyle Army, a track I do know pretty well. A track again that I've played a lot in GP bikes and it is a lovely, lovely circuit. And I really do enjoy it, me and my friends. Every time we hop on that track, it's always a good time. Played it in some of the Dill 469 streams, if you know Dill 469 as well a lot of streams of GP bikes we've uh, done a couple of them at this circuit and it is always good fun we're maxing the bike out so we get down towards turn one obviously the braking distances that will be the interesting part because I've not got any AI to reference and of course you only have one attempt at these it's just your first lap time that they take and I think we look we need to do a 1 minute 55 which I think should be pretty achievable there's definitely a circuit I'd love to see back at a sort of world level whether that be uh, World Superbikes or MotoGP probably Superbikes at least first, anyway, and see how it goes. This is massively steep. It's not this steep in the, the, the versions I've played before, that's for sure. That caught me off guard. That was hella steep, that hill there. Imagine this one probably also is going to be a lot steeper. Now, this one's actually about what I remember it, but that is massively steep, that hill there. So you can probably break really deep there. And through the final corner. Apparently, we've got three temps of penalty time, but I don't know where we picked that one up from. But I'll tell you what, this was an easy challenge. Probably 55.9. We should fairly easily achieve that one. Yeah, 1 minute 50 we did there. So even with the penalty time, we were going to absolutely destroy what we had to do there. Compared to Monza, where, to be fair, I thought I was quite close, but to be fair, maybe we just rode really badly. That was ridiculously easy. We were five seconds underneath. So then, on to the final round of this series of events at the Suzuka circuit. A Suzuka short, so actually the race will be very, very quick. So I guess we'll see how we get on. But I think we might be struck a little bit by a screen freeze because you can see the race starts at seven o'clock and it is five times speed. Also, Charles Nolan is in this race. That's actually showing us Charles Nolan. I've not seen him in this championship so far. I don't know why it's so obsessed with him because he was really bad when we actually faced up against him. And here we are then on the grid. Looks like we are a bit further back in this one. We'll have to see where we are. We are P10, so that's usually where I thought we'd start, but we were P8 in that last race for some reason. But it's been a decent start. So we go down towards turn one. I've not really raced the AI at Suzuka much before. I've, I've done quite a few laps of Suzuka in my time, but not particularly raced the ride AI that many times through here. And it seems like they're not very good because what was that turn two for those AI that's clattered into each other? To be fair, we actually haven't gained much progress because we've only ever taken, what, one rider overall and two fell off. So we've actually been past ourselves. Well, I apologise. I've just sent Luana to the Shadow Realm. Like I said, my riding has been a bit dodgy in some of these races. I do apologise, but it's just still a case of trying to get used to the bike. Because the physics still feel quite floaty. I, f I feel very disconnected from the bike. And like I keep going on about, the hitboxes are just not very accurate. So it makes it very, very difficult. And definitely should have picked up a penalty there. Because we were literally on the ground. Oh, we did pick up a penalty. It's a bit weird how the penalties are the top right when you're in a race. But top left when you're on a time trial. And I still don't really know where I picked up the penalty, if I'm quite honest. At Kyle Army. I've not checked the footage yet. But I guess you guys probably be screaming it. We've got Ben Wilson in front of us. Don't think that's the Ben Wilson, but uh, even still, an interesting uh, set of name there. You can see Jakob Lakatos in front of him. We've seen him quite a few times. Remember him at Donington Park in the last episode when we had to do the uh, sort of comeback from the back of the grid. Looks like we're going to struggle to get much above P6 here because it's quite difficult to pass and the track is just ridiculously short. I don't know why they do some events at ridiculously short circuits, whereas for example, Donington Park was just a completely sort of normal Grand Prix le length circuit. Just really bizarre. So we're starting the final lap then. Can we try and pass Ben Wilson? We've got one hell of a slipstream street down towards turn one. We're going to easily get him here. So up into P5. Jakob Lakatos in front of us. But unfortunately, I don't think we're going to get a podium. We've just been really taken by him. But we're back up the inside again. Wrong gear there. But to be fair, we picked up the power enough to uh, sort of make up for it, I think. 
Here we go, around the outside at Jakob. Oh, he lent across us, to be fair. He's got the right to do it. We're trying to sort of make a gap. Can we try and ride around the outside of him? We're going to run our room. He lost the front on the curb there. Surely we're going to beat into this section. No, he hangs it around the outside, to be fair. And this is where the night race comes into it. So, to be fair, we had it on, like, the last corner of the race. So it's not too bad at all. So, at the last corner, we've just got to make sure that we get the slipstream. And it's P5 here. But, again, another one of those races where it was super, super difficult to actually make any progress. Yeah, you see on this occasion, it would have been better to have the slick tyres. You can see that Ben Wilson was on slick tyres. There are a lot of stock tyres here, but you can see that Abel Mayer was the winner. A much smaller performance point, but the slick tyres just carried us through, and that was what you wanted because you were on the side of the tyre for so long in this instance. But you know what? We couldn't put the slick tyres on, so we couldn't really do any more than that. And to be fair, we kind of got a bit bullied in the first couple of corners, and the, the tracks are just too short to make up the time in a lot of these events. That's the problem. I, I don't think it's really fair they start you mid-grid and then sort of expect you to get through when the, there's basically one racing line this whole track. But there you go then, we finished P5, 24 leaderboard points. Might actually have a look at the leaderboard after this one, because we haven't really had a look at it to see what level we are up to. And there we go then, that is the Stock Naked 700 World Tour complete. We're up to 127th place, 479 points. So we'll have a look at the leaderboard if we go back to the uh, the main hub of the career. So we're actually on par with Kang Wu. So maybe that's why actually we have certain riders as our rivals. Is it based on where we are in this? If we scroll down... Well, you can actually go quite far down. So 154th is the bottom one. So we are above a decent number of riders here. Charles Nolan. Ah, you see, that's probably why. Because we were close to him in terms of points. He's 137th. So I don't know why it was going on about him like he was some god. Because we are 10 places in front of him now. It does make me wonder, do these guys pick up points throughout the career mode? You would imagine so. So, yeah, I'll be interested to see. Ah, uh, Luana Pinto is the next rival, you see. Because she is 488. So she's a few points ahead of us. We'll probably overtake her. In the next episode, I would imagine. We have a look how many points we need to get into the top 100. Of course, that's a bit of a, uh, a position to get to. 532, so we're a bit of a way from getting up into that one. But we've not done that many episodes, and we're already up to like 400 points. So, yeah, it'll be, uh, be interesting to see how long it takes us to get into that top 100. But that pretty much does bring this episode to a close, guys. So I hope you have enjoyed that one. If you are new to the channel, please do like the video and subscribe because it really helps me out. And of course, you get some more bike game racing content in your subscription feed. Ride 5, Merch 23, GP Bikes, plenty more as well. So do stick around if you are new to the channel. But like I said, I hope you did enjoy that one. I hope you enjoy the rest of your day. Hope you're all safe and I shall see you in the next one.